start off by telling you I have been a fan of yours for a really long time. Oh, thank you. And I want to take a walk or a jog briefly down memory lane mm -hmm. and talk about when you knew that performing is going to be your destiny. Yeah, let's do a jog. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, my parents tell me, I don't remember this, but when I was little that I used to try to stylize different songs, like Mary Had a Little Lamb and Twinkle Twinkle. So I'd come up to them and be like, okay, well, how do you like Twinkle Twinkle? Do you like it like this? And I'd sing it like one way. I'd be like, or do you like it like this? And like sing it another way. So that was kind of like the start for them, I guess. Um, for me, I'd have to say um, probably the beginning of middle school is when I really started taking a liking to singing, started taking voice lessons, wanted to get in the studio and record, wanted to be on stage. So probably uh, about seventh grade. Well, you really have been at it for a while and mm -hmm. you can stage your course. What is making your music and your act so unique? Um, I think performance is so important. I think you can have great music, but if you don't put on a good show, um, people don't really fall in love with your music as much. If you put on a great show, people will connect with you so much more. And I think it's so important to have the visual with the sound and the costumes and have dancing. And I just love a whole like production. Inspiration, musically, I have a lot of different <laughs> people or a lot of different muses. Um, I love I love Ed James. I grew up listening to Mariah Carey. Um, I love the blues and jazz, like Duke Ellington. Uh, for stars right now, like I absolutely love Pink. Um, I think sure. she has a great voice and is just so different. She is very different. Yeah, love her. Definitely my mom and dad. They've been so inspirational to me. And, um, they have really kind of backed you through this this whole career of yours. They it's have. The building of it, right? They have. And I'm so close with both of them, and they've just been behind me for the whole thing, and I couldn't ask for a better parent, so. You are a finalist on NBC's Fame. Uh-huh. You're like the triple threat, according to that show. <laughs> so going back to knowing that the theater aspect of, of your career, uh -huh. you, were, you were Val from Chorus Line. Yes. You were such Frenchie from mm -hmm. Greece. Now, how do you feel like any of those have really played into your, your singing career now? Um, I think just being on stage for any type of show, like any musical, you're on stage seven days a week doing this musical, that becomes your home. You step on the stage and it's just like second nature to perform and you, you just feel comfortable up there. So I think I got my confidence and stage presence from, from being up on stage um, and doing musicals like that. Um, Performing your own stuff, you're putting yourself out there, which is even cooler though. I mean, hopefully if they, your fans like it, but you get to break the fourth wall and connect with your fans, and I think that's really important. To okay, going back to theater, what uh -huh. was your favorite character? Honestly, I loved playing Val in Chorus Line. It was so much fun. What was fun about it? Um, singing her song. Her song, I don't know if you know of the Chorus Line, it's called Tits and Ass. <laughs> Fun. I apparently don't know it. No, I can't believe I've never heard of it. But it's, yeah, it was really funny because I got cast and I walked in and they're like, okay, Lauren, we want to cast you as Val on a chorus line, but there's only one problem. I'm like, what? They're like, you don't have any tits, so we're going to need you to do something. I'm like, um, okay, don't worry. I will figure that out. I'll figure that out. But you no. Found that Victoria's Secret at that point? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and just stack them on. <laughs> Stuff them in. Well, you've had a great opportunity to work with Brian Friedman, who mm -hmm. everybody loves from So You Think You Can Dance. Yes. Now, when did you two come together? We joined forces a while ago back in Arizona. We're, um, I don't even know how old I was. I was probably like nine years old. Which nine, was like nine or ten. Not long ago, right? Yeah, like five years ago. <laughs> Um, and I went to this open gym thing where it's at a uh, like gymnastics place and you go there and you pay and people will spot you doing back handsprings or back tucks, whatever. And I met him there and I recognized him from, um, from Newsies, the movie, and also from Kids Incorporated. Hi, I'm Hildy and I am not really a waitress. <laughs> You're not really a waitress. No. <laughs> not really. Well, Can you guess what I am? Talk about your CD, not really a waitress. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? And w creating that album or, or making the album, mm -hmm. what uh, what went into that? Um, 
you know, I knew I wanted to kind of go a new direction with my sound, with the music, and so I wasn't sure what that was, and I heard um, the song sent to me, Boy Shorts, which is my first single that I released, and I loved the sound, I really liked it, and I, so I decided to work with the producers on a whole album. The name came later, and we ended up adding a song called Not Really a Waitress as well, and just, you know, being out here for so many years, trying to get by, being a waitress to be able to pay my rent and afford tracks and all that stuff, I thought it was appropriate. This album is a little different and um, I'm really proud of the way it turned out. All the songs are very different. You go from one track to the next and it, it just, there's a different sound. There's rock influence, there's um, R&B influence, it's pop music, so it kind of has just a blend of everything. To all the girls who want to do something.